In this session, we're going to cover writing and reading text files. There's quite a few ways, actually, in AutoHotKey to write and read text files. I'm just going to cover the one I, I use most often, which is, I think, what most people use. We get, first, we've got to create a file. So if you look in this folder, there are no text files right now, right? They're all files we've been working with so far. So we're going to do file append, which is a, it's a great one. I use it a lot. The text, this will be just my example. So that's literally the text you're going to write to it. The file name, now it's going to default, if I want to place it elsewhere, I'd put the entire path. But if I want it right in this directory where the script is sitting, I can just make up an easy name. So example.txt. And then in coding, I like to store everything as UTF-8. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to understand if you need UTF-8 or not, or, or any other encoding. But I think the default is ASCII, or maybe the default is the version you're writing with the version of AutoHotKey, what version you're running. But um, I like to use UTF-8, and I like to control that and set it just that way I know, because I deal with a lot of other interesting characters in this way I just take care of it. So I'm going to save this and run it. And notice in here now, look, there's an example.txt file. We'll open it in site just to have it a different program. And so you can see here it is. Now, I want to point out one of the things I often mess up on is let's say I was writing a log file or something and I wanted to write a next line to this. Well, if I rerun this, what's going to happen is it dumps it within the same line, right? Because I didn't tell it to put in a, either a line return or a new line. So what you really should do is in here is put in like a tick mark in, and let me go ahead and clear this whole thing out. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run this once. And of course, nothing new is gonna be here. Although we do see there's a line two now. Now when I run it again, now they're on the second line, right? And if I ran it again, it would put in the third line. Of course, I would be changing this. Um, the other thing is that let's say if you didn't wanna have that here, I'm going to cut this and put var, and then, which I need to fix that here in a second, var. So I can dump in the text and then put percent signs. Actually, you can, I believe, put just one on the left in the space, but we're going to do it this way. So this will add it on. Let me double check here before we do it. So there will only have two right now. Let me click in here and make sure. Okay. So when I run it, that's how you can save. It is a variable using a variable in here because sometimes the text you're dumping in there is pretty big and you don't want to put it in this command, right? So that's an easy way to do that. Now, let's say I'm going to stop writing to it. Oh, hey, wrong, wrong program. So I'm going to stop writing to it and I am going to read that file. So I'm going to do a file read. And now we need to stuff that thing into a variable var. We'll, we'll call it out var just so we don't get confused. Um, and then the file name, which again, because it's in that same directory, I can just say example.txt, and I can save this and run it. Oh, and which wouldn't do anything. Why wouldn't that do anything? Well, because I didn't do anything with the variable, right? I read the file, hopefully, stored it in this variable, but then I didn't display it anyway. So here is, I'm gonna put a message box out var, and now when I run this, it goes and reads that file, pulls it into memory, and then displays it. And here's where I could do some text manipulation. I could grab certain things if I wanted to. I can do whatever I want. You know, it can be any any type of a text file. I'm not going to go into what a text file is compared to a binary file. The vast majority of stuff that you're probably working with are text files if you're trying to read them. And so that's that simple. Now, if what one thing I want to add here, and, and honestly, I can never remember it. So I just have, I use this tool called Quick Access Pop-Up, and I've programmed these things for myself. And notice I have a file read with UTF-8, uh, sorry, UTF encoding. Um, so let me go ahead and get rid of that one. That was using it as a variable. But here, um, I'll call that out var, and just so we can see what I added here. So up above... I'm going to change this to example.txt. So both of these are, are virtually doing the equivalent. The difference being in this one, this weird star P65001, the 65001 is the code page number for UTF-8 encoding. And often AutoHotKey will detect it properly and read it in and, and render it in UTF-8, but sometimes it doesn't. And so 
I don't like to take chances with it, so I stuffed this thing in here. So I recommend if you're using UTF-8, um, use this line. I have it in there. Like I said, I can never remember it, so I, I have it stored somewhere. I could have a hot string. Actually, I did have a hot string. I noticed it when it popped up there, but um, I don't type it that often, so I use the GUI to go find it and pull it in. And uh, and again, this will run. You now, if I had um, special characters in there, like a tilde, uh, Enye, or, you know, um, some emoji or something, and it didn't properly recognize that it was UTF-8. If I had used the line eight, it, it may have balked at it and shown like a question mark or a square. Um, and you'll see these when, when there are problems. Sometimes it's a font, sometimes it's encoding. And uh, we have a great webinar on encoding. If you are new to encoding and get confused on it and it, uh, it is a very, very, very complex topic, um, way beyond, it's still beyond me, and I do this a lot. Uh, at least I understand I have to deal with it. So that's how you can read files. Like I said, there's there's file loops. You can also get just a file, a line from a file if you want. Um, I rarely do that, so and it's a little more in depth, but um, check out some of the other commands around file um, reading and file looping. This is a quick, simple way to both read it and um, uh, write it and actually you know what I forgot was this one should have been down here. So let's do one more We're gonna check if a file exists. So There's a, a function called file exists And then we put in the file pattern and so that's just gonna be example.txt and so um, What I want to do though is see if it's there, right? So I'm gonna say if and I'm gonna throw this thing in parens and now if it's found, it's gonna say, I'll, I'll do a message box here. Remember, because it's it's an if command and it's just one line, I don't need to put the braces to, to bracket it together to, to um, say it's one thing. So message box found file. Um, and let's build a second one. And we're gonna say, so that's if it's not found, right? This exclamation point says if it's not, and then the next thing. So it's not found. We're going to say, didn't find the file. So I'm going to run this and hopefully we find, we get a message box saying found file. Oh, didn't find the file. What'd I do? Example.txt. Oh, I didn't put them in quotes. So that needs to get wrapped in quotes, double quotes, I should say. And there we go and we run it so now it found this file and that's why we're seeing this message box but notice we're not going to see the next one because it did find the file this is a didn't find so it doesn't show that one if i change this to say let's say this is two and this is a two which doesn't exist right this file is not in that folder when i run it it's going to skip the first one so it doesn't show up because it didn't find that file, yet it shows the second one. And so this is a, a nice, easy way to check to see if a file exists before you try to do stuff to it. I use this a lot when I'm going to write a file for a, uh, let's say I'm doing some data scraping or something and I wanna, um, I wanna write a header unless there's already data in there. So a header row, right? So uh, if there's already, the file exists, then I don't wanna write a header row. But if the file doesn't exist, then I want to go ahead and write a header row and data. And so I'll use this to see first ping to see if the file exists. And if it does exist, then I just write the data. If it doesn't exist, then I write the header row and the data. So I hope that helps. Cheers.